In this lesson, we're going to start working on the deforming loops of the hand. All right, so we had created the fingers in the last lesson. We've got those roughly positioned. And now what we want to do is start getting everything connected. So the easiest thing to start taking care of is going to be the loops in between the fingers. And this is going to allow the fingers to spread apart. And we're kind of building that webbing that you would see in between the fingers. So to get started with this, uh, the first thing that we should do is go ahead and get rid of the Turbo Smooth modifier that's on these objects. So I'm going to right click and delete those. And the reason that I'm doing that is to um, reduce any problems with um, attaching the objects. And whenever you have modifiers on top of them, they can be a little difficult to overcome. So for example, let me just show you, um, if I hit Control-Z one time and have this Turbo Smooth on the middle finger here, um, if I were to come in and go down to Editable Poly and then go to Attach, I could start attaching the rest of these. And then I attach this one that actually has the Turbo Smooth um, turned on, on end result. Notice how it starts to kind of create this waviness. And that could be a little bit of an issue. And the reason for that is because we had a Turbo Smooth on this object and then we have another turbo smooth on this object. Now the reason for that is because we're showing the end result of the turbo smooth on this object and we also have the isoline display. So we have a little bit of a difference. So I always find that it's a little bit easier to just make sure that turbo smooth is turned off on all of the objects but one. So we can take this one, we can right click and delete uh, the turbo smooth. Okay, but you'll see that that's still attached. So let's hit control Z to where that's no longer attached. Um, let's take this one and delete Turbo Smooth, and we'll do the same thing here. So these have that Turbo Smooth modifier applied. Let's come in and go to Edible Poly, Attach, Attach the uh, fingers, and there we go. So now we're ready to start working in between. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to start recognizing the segments that match up the closest. So these two will work just fine. And actually I could select these two as well and use bridge. Now hitting bridge will create those polygons in between. Now at this point we could leave them just the way they are or we could create a segment that goes down in between and start to create a little bit more of a loop in between those fingers. Now I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at one because it's going to be a little bit easier to work with at first. Now if we need to add a loop we can always do that later on. So I'm just going to select these and hit bridge. Now you'll notice it kind of starts to twist that segment that's in the middle. Um, this can be handled by going to polygon mode and selecting, let's say, the end of the finger. And we'll just hit grow until it selects all the polygons in that index finger. And then I can grab my rotation tool and I can rotate that a little bit more to kind of alleviate the stress that's on that finger. Now you want to be careful that you're not rotating that so much to where you get that polygon straight, but then your finger is kind of off at a weird angle. So we don't want to go too far um, away from that. Now we could also come in and we could take the vertices and we could just kind of tweak those a little bit to where we can move those. The fingers don't have to be perfectly round on the inside. Okay, so um, if I want to come in and just tweak that just a little bit on either side, just kind of let them share that. And I'll do the same thing right here. I'll push that back in the X, pull this one um, towards us in the X. And it's just a little bit of um, care on that topology. So that makes that a little more relaxed. So now we've got the webbing between the fingers and now we can start to come in and we can grab that border all the way around. And I can hold shift and drag that up. And now I've got the polygons for my knuckles and then also for the pad um, on the palm here. So now at this point, I'd come in and I'd start working on um, straightening this out, making that a little more flat for the pad on the hand. So I'm going to grab this edge. And I'll grab this edge and pull that forward too. OK. So we're just going to pull that out. All right, great. So now that we have this, we're going to run into a little bit of an issue. As you can see, we have lots and lots of segments um, here across the knuckles, okay, and also across the palm of the hand. And we're going to have to take all of these and bring those into the palm, and then ultimately that's going to have to go up into the wrist. 
Now normally right here is where I start to reduce some of the segments that are going to be going up into the rest of the hand before I start building the rest of that hand. So what I do is I take the segments that are connecting the middle of the fingers here. So this webbing that's in between the fingers, I will take these vertices that come off of those segments and I'll actually weld those into one. So I'm going to use my weld settings, draw up that threshold until it pops and that creates a triangle there. Nothing wrong with that. We're going to go ahead and leave it just the way it is for right now. So we'll select that, we'll hit weld, and do the same thing here. And I, I tend to do one at a time instead of selecting all the ones that I need uh, because you never know if that weld threshold is going to be closer to another vertex in a different direction, okay, and giving you an unexpected weld. So doing it one by one like this is perfectly fine. Okay, so now I've created those triangles that are in between the fingers and I've reduced the amount of segments that are going to be around the hand. Now we need to start thinking about where we can take these segments. So some of these segments can be um, taken into other parts of the fingers. So for example, the side of the hand here um, toward the thumb, we're actually going to have a loop that comes off of that and connects to the thumb itself. So now we need to do just a little bit of planning on how that's going to work. So right in here, this is going to be uh, the webbing in between your index finger and your thumb, and that's a really fleshy uh, part of the hand. So we're going to need plenty of geometry in there to allow that to flex and to come together uh, whenever the, the finger or the thumb is more relaxed. So looking at this, I'm going to take this edge and I need to figure out exactly where I want that to connect. So this is the top of the thumb, directly in the middle. Okay. So I'm looking at this edge, which is going to be kind of off to the side, and I want that to connect right into the side of my index finger. So I'm going to count from the middle. I've got one segment, two segments. Okay, and that's where that starts. So I'm going to count from the middle of the index finger, one, two. So I'm going to connect it to this edge right here. Okay, so that should correspond pretty well. Let's use bridge, and we're going to use the bridge settings to make a gap there. So we're going to put in, let's say, two segments for right now. Let's just start small, and if we need to add some, we can. Now I'm going to take that polygon that's been created in the middle and just draw that up in the Z direction, and then pull it over in the Y a little bit just to kind of create that loop that you would have uh, between those fingers. Okay, so we've got that first loop, and that's going to allow us to uh, pull the thumb toward the index finger and out away, okay, creating that, that motion there. Now what we need to do is we need to continue to create that loop. So I'm going to go from this edge to this edge, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Now what I could do is take uh, these three edges, and I'm going to hold down shift and drag that down in the Z at first and then pull it over in the X. Okay, and then in the Y. Now let's go to vertex mode and let's take that vertex that's right here and we'll target weld that to here. Let's do the same thing right here. There we go. So we've got a nice little loop starting there and that's going to be all the geometry that we need to connect those pieces. Now we need to start working on the palm because there are going to be some important loops here uh, that we'll need to allow for the proper deformation there. So for example, we need that pad that connects uh, the thumb and the pad here. So if you take a look at your hand, the thumb, that m tissue that's right along that palm, it's, it's one of the most defining features of the hand itself it connects right into the top of the palm here. So we're going to take that geometry from right here, and I'm going to drag that out. Hold shift and drag this straight out. And then I'm going to pull it back in the X just to kind of get those vertices to match up pretty well. And then I'm going to um, go to vertex mode, hitting one, and then we're going to target weld this vertex to here. Okay, so I've create, started creating this loop. Let's take that vertex and let's pull this out. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this edge and we're not going to continue down the palm. We're actually going to take this edge and we're going to start creating a loop that goes over the top and meets right up into the wrist up here. 
So let's go from here. Um, let's go in our X and Y direction. So let's hold down Shift and drag that out. And I'm going to continue to drag that out. Okay, just like so. If you want, you can go to your left view, and it might give you a little bit better of an idea of how to move that. Let's go to vertex mode, and let's readjust these vertices. And pull those up just a little bit. Go into our perspective view. Um, if you hit Z, that will frame on whatever selection you have. So whether that be the sub-object mode, or the sub-object that you have selected at that time, and that just makes things a little bit easier to get uh, close to. So let's take this edge, let's drag that up in the Z one more time, and let's take that vertex that we just created out here on the edge, and let's pull that up. All right, so now I'm going to take this vertice, our vertex, our set of vertices there, and we're going to start pulling those out, creating that fleshy uh, bit that we need for the palm that connects right into the thumb. Okay, all right, so we've got that started. It's looking pretty good so far, and now what I want to do is I want to start connecting uh, the thumb into that. So if you take a look at the side of your thumb, uh, coming off of the, um, the nail here, this loop right here will actually have to come around and connect uh, right up into the top of that. So that's a natural loop that we're going to need. So I'm going to hit Control shift s and that's going to bring up our Swift Loop tool. And again, if you don't have that keyboard shortcut file loaded, you can just use Swift Loop, Swift loop right here. So I'm going to hold down Shift. All right, actually, I won't. Let's put it right here, and then we'll pull that out ourselves just a little bit. Now let's take this edge and this edge, okay, just those two, and let's bridge. Let's use three segments, and then we're going to take that polygon right there in the middle, and I'm going to pull that up, and you can see how that's starting to create that tissue that you need on the palm. Take that edge, pull that up, and this one. And we'll go to vertex mode, and we'll just do a little bit of tweaking on that shape. So with just creating these loops that we need um, in the hand to allow that to deform properly. So what we need this for is to bring that thumb in as if we were making a fist. And it's going to create that seam uh, that you see. So if you kind of curl your fingers together, you can see the, the seam right here that goes across your hand, and then you can see the seam that your thumb creates in the middle of your palm. So now uh, we've got those main loops. Now we, what we need to do is we need to start creating uh, the geometry uh, for the top of the hand and the side of the hand and all of that, getting all of this filled in. So in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to create and block in some of those loops and just start blocking in the rest of the hand and then we'll fill those gaps. So we'll get started with that next.